Hey everybody, we are here getting ready to get started. Today's NCLEX topic is lung cancer. Hi everyone, my name is Regina Callion, MSN RN, and I stopped by to help you get your nursing license. If you are a nursing student, we have an amazing event that helps so many people pass NCLEX and it starts tonight. Do you know what it is? It is called the Seven days of NCLEX. Yes, this is happening tonight at 8 p.m. This is our holiday NCLEX review for free. And I need you to be ready for it because it drops tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm going to talk more about it. You need to have this workbook. I, I love it. Uh, Nadine says, I'm always ready and willing. Tonight is our workbook. We're going to be doing seven days of a free NCLEX review. I can't get into it. It's too much going on. But we do have our topic, lung cancer today, which I'm going to go into and our how to pass NCLEX Monday motivation that you need. Merry Christmas, everybody. A hey, seven days of NCLEX. I just give you a little bit more. If you are not familiar with the seven days of NCLEX, this is the hottest NCLEX review, the biggest one for nursing students on the planet. And it runs from December the 26th to January first. We do this because our family just wants to say Merry Christmas to you guys. We hope you had a wonderful day yesterday. But all of us as a family, we just are bringing the gifts on this year. Seven days of NCLEX is coming. And also, if you guys were not familiar, another great thing about signing up for seven days of NCLEX is that we are doing a nightly giveaway of $200 for our Remart nurses. So those of us who follow us on the social media channel, we got that money for you, okay? And it's not play money. It's real, real money that I will be giving you guys. It's yours um, just for supporting and being down with the team. So um, nightly $200 cash app drop. I'm just going to be dropping it to you guys. And hopefully it will continue to be a blessing to our community. And if you didn't know, the NCLEX V2, the sale, the sale is also starting right now for seven days. And then you guys see that is the new NCLEX review program. So it's better content. It comes with the question bank. It also comes with your quick facts book, your downloadable workbook, and your next gen. You can activate the, the next gen questions in the question bank. Or you could just do the straight question bank. But I'm telling you guys to take advantage of this opportunity for the final time. Right now, you get three months access to all of that. Not for $200, not for $100, but for $89. And so that price, okay, that price will be ending soon. That's our introductory price. We definitely want it to reward those who take advantage of opportunities fast. And as like you were coming, to, as like, are you thinking about the holiday season? I know for myself, there were some things that I wanted to get for um, for my kids for the holiday season, and I just acted on them right now. And yesterday, Christmas time, I was just like, "Whew!" I'm so glad that I took advantage of the things that I wanted for them because when I went back to the stores, they were all gone. And so, taking fast action on the things you want. Oh, it, it makes you feel so much better. So I'm telling you guys all of this to say, don't miss this opportunity because this $89 pricing for three months is, is a special offer for us. And so happy holidays, get into it. We got to dive though. I'm going to transition into our topic for today as you prepare. Oh, and then also one more thing again, Seven days of NCLEX starts tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're not in Eastern Time Zone, just convert it and so into your time zone so that you show up on time because a uh, report will be given to you guys. It will be given to you guys on time prayerfully. Also, go to remarnurse.com to take advantage of the V2 that's coming out. And then, hey, so good. Okay, guys. All right. Let's get into our topic, which is lung cancer. Now, lung cancer is very important for NCLEX. We do general cancer overview when it comes to NCLEX, but lung cancer really is going to be the, the, the largest population of cancer patients that uh, a, a new nurse may come in contact with. And so we need to break it down specifically 
Because one thing that I'm noticing about lung cancer, and I think that this needs to be more discovered in healthcare, is that people can be diagnosed with lung cancer without having a personal history with smoking, right? So what that means is that you can develop lung cancer um, if you had certain environmental risk factors. For example, if your parents smoked, right? If you grew up in a household where your parents smoked, even though you didn't smoke, um, you could be diagnosed with cancer. Um, and, and so to me, that's so scary. Like if you worked in an environment where they were smoking, if you flew a lot, remember um, back in the day, you used to could smoke on airplanes. You used to could smoke in hospitals. You used to could smoke in restaurants. And so a lot of us grew up in those environments, right? And, and so as a result of it, as we age, lung cancer diagnoses are coming. So I think this is very important for us to sit down as a group of nurses and nursing students and let's just look more into it, okay? So when you talk about lung cancer, um, oncology nurses and those preparing for NCLEX need to be familiar with the um, administration, the treatments, the signs and symptoms. So I'm just gonna read this to you. Smoking, chronic cough, and questionable lung masses, a uh, mass are the signs most associated with lung cancer known, since it is one of the most common malignancies worldwide. However, like any other cancers, it needs to be evaluated through biopsy, staging, and treatment to confirm diagnosis and further characterization of the malignancy helps in formulating targeted therapies. So basically, lung cancer is very, very prevalent in society, right? And the, 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 the size of the lung cancer, the type of the lung cancer will help to determine clinically what the treatment is for that patient. And also the type of the lung cancer too, as well, will help to predict a survivability rate for your patient. And nurses, we have to be able to speak compassionately, but knowledgeably about lung cancer. So let's get into it, okay? All right. So there are two types of lung cancer, uh, small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. And what I want you guys to just think about in your mind is this. When we're talking about staging cancer, everything is done under a microscope. So when we talk about small and non-small, everything is pretty small because you're looking under a microscope anyways. But one is more aggressive than the other. OK, one is uh, more fatal than the other. And we're going to we're going to focus on that. OK, so small cell lung cancer is aggressive and fast growing. OK, small cell lung cancer is aggressive and fast growing where you have non small cell lung cancer being a slower, um, more uh, it's a Oh, it's a less severe type of lung cancer, if I can say that. I mean, because we're talking about cancer here, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to have it, but one can be more aggressive than the other. Now, I'll say this. The, the number two, the non-small cell lung cancer is more uh, prevalent. So the majority of people that get lung cancer get the slow progressive one, right? Right which is kind of like, whew, yes. So when, when you have a patient that has small cell lung cancer, their, um, their disease process is going to be quicker. What happens is a lot of the, the large central airways are going to be involved and it's going to spread quicker and metastasize sooner. So metastasize means that parts of the cells go from one place to another. Another thing that makes small cell lung cancer so uh, so aggressive is that it's kind of weird because when you talk about cancer, you're talking about cells that are damaged, but they're also functional. So 
for example, if we're talking about cells that have been exposed to smoke, right, nicotine, um, they, are, they become damaged over time, but they still have a, a function, you right, you right. They still have a purpose in the body. So one at one point they're serving a purpose. They're looking like cells, but at the other point they're they're not checked. Cancer is cells that are unchecked. So they're rapidly right. They're rapidly growing. They're rapidly spreading, but they begin to have functions. So with small cell lung cancer, uh, a, a very insidious function is that these cells not only are they replicating quickly and out of control, these cells are also developing hormones and they're releasing hormones that the body doesn't need. So for example, these small cell lung cancer cells can produce cortisol, right? So they're producing cortisol hormones and giving your body extra cortisol hormones so that the body is now having what kind of condition? If you have small cell lung cancer that's putting out cortisol into your bloodstream and into your body, what, what condition are you going to develop now on top of having lung cancer, right? Think about that. Tell me what it is. Also, yes, we're getting into the comments. We're getting into the content. I want, this is, this is the difference and this is how you prepare to be successful on, a, on an NCLEX exam, right? Um, it's not about just doing questions from a question bank. You guys really need to sit down with this topic. So yes, exactly. So you can have cancer cells that are replicating and producing hormones, and now you have Cushing syndrome, right? Um, another thing that the the these cancer cells will do is they will start to produce. Um, they will start to produce. What is the hormone? Why why is it escaping me? The the ah uh, it it helps you. This is. It will start to produce the hormone that tells the body to absorb water. Tell me what that hormone is. It's, it's telling the body to absorb water. What hormone is that? We talk about it in diabetes insipidus and SIADH, <laughs> right? So you have issues with, with having too much water right? Too much water in your, in your bloodstream. All right. And so these are, yes, the antidiuretic hormone. Yes. These are issues of small cell lung cancer. So you think like, mm, all right, this is an aggressive uh, cell that has these hormonal functions and the, these neurotransmitted and it's cancer at the same time. Get out of here. Yes. Okay. So that's small cell lung cancer. Now, the non-small cell lung cancer, all right, so now do we know which one is worse of the two, right? Do we know which one is worse? Can we talk about them a little bit? So non-small cell lung cancer, you have four types of them. I don't really need you to know the, um, the specifics of adenocarcinoma, squamous carcinoma, adenosquamous carcinoma, and large cell carcinoma. Um, carcinoma. You don't really need to know the, the the differentiation for NCLEX, but you do need to know that these, these types of cancers usually are less aggressive because they're in the periphery of the lungs, right? So they're at the, um, the outside of the lungs. And so, and, and, and most of them you're able to catch early on and they don't involve the, 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 the glands and the hormones and things like that. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So when we're talking about the small cell, these are affecting the major airways in the lungs. They're also spreading rapidly, producing hormones and all uh, and involving the nerves, right? Non-small cell, we're gonna we're gonna see a slower progression of them. All right. I hope I did that justice explaining. Staging, staging of cancer. Mm. When you think about cancer, I want you to really think about it like fighting an enemy. So when you think of, okay, if a city was under, if your city was under attack and you knew an enemy was coming, there are certain things you would want to know about that enemy, right? You would want to know, okay, is it one enemy or is it more than one enemy? Where is the enemy going to be, right? What kind of weapons will the enemy have? 
How big is the enemy, right? So that's kind of how we think about cancer. So when we're talking about um, staging of cancer, we're going to look at characteristics of it. So tumor, the T for tumor, right? Um, can the tumor be, uh, where is the tumor? Let's talk about it. Where is the tumor? All right. Um, also, the sizing of a tumor. When we talk about cancer. Um, from what I understand, a quarter, an American quarter is used to really stage how big or how small a tumor is. All right. So you want to know where is your enemy? You want to know the size of your enemy. And then you also want to know the location of your enemy. So, um, hey, where is that enemy? Is it all over the place or is it in just one place? All right. The, the node, the node involvement has to do with your lymph node. All right. With your lymph node. So if you have um, an NX, that means that there is no lymph nodes that can be um, assessed, all right? Your lymph nodes cannot be assessed. And then if you have an N0, that means that there is no lymph node involvement. And so that's good. Whenever you see um, an NX or an O, that means that there is no lymph node involvement. And that's really cool. Metastasis. So metastasis is just the idea that, hey, your patient is having this cancer in other organs, okay? Your patient is having this cancer in other organs. And so that means that your enemy is in multiple locations. Does it make sense for surgery if the enemy is in multiple locations or do we need to find another way to treat it? These are all, all very important questions. And then the fourth is the clinical manifestations. Hey, we have over 300 nurses right now studying. This is the largest NCLEX review happening right now on the planet. I guarantee you, we are all over the globe here at Remar Review. Every Monday, we do. We do. We come together and we study content. So set your alarm for about noonish. And this is what we do. Today, we're talking about lung cancer. And I hope you learn some things while you're here. All right, let's get back into it. So the fourth characteristic that we want to know is this, the clinical manifestations. So you have these manifestations that are specific to specific to the lung area because we are talking about lung cancer. And then you also have general signs and symptoms that may not specifically point to lung cancer, but you know that something is wrong. So these are all clinical terms that as a nurse, you need to be familiar with. Um, of course, these things will show up if you don't take the time to look at them now look them up, they will show up on your NCLEX exam. And I'm not going to sit here and define all these terms for you. I want to give you some responsibility in your studying session. Okay. So a lot of these clinical terms, your patient will come with the dyspnea can be usually due to airway obstruction. If your patient is having um, signs of a bloody cough or rough uh, rust colored sputum, that is something that they need to look into. Any kind of voice changes as well. All right. Um, general signs and symptoms make sense. You're not eating, you're not um, having the appropriate weight for your age and race, right? You're having chronic pain or recurrent infections because your immune system is really taxed because it's fighting cancer. And it's also trying to deal with the um, the the <laughs> the effects of these cells spreading like wildfire, right? The most frequent sites of distant metastasis for cancer um, pertaining to the lungs is going to be in the bones, and what happens is the um, when we talk about the small cell, when we talk about the small cell lung cancer, another one of the things that it can do is also release calcium 
into the bloodstream. Like one of one of the hormones or neurotransmitters, I can't remember which exactly what the name of it is, but it will tell the body to start releasing calcium from the bones. And so when the body starts to do this, the bones become weaker and those cells invade the bones. Very, oh, so terrible. Um, abdominal pain as well. Um, we can have the, the cancer spreading to the adrenal glands, which is a frequent site of metastasis, uh, metastasizing there. And we know that the adrenal glands sit like right on top of the kidneys. So your patient will have this, uh, this not only their loss of appetite, but they'll also complain of, of abdominal pain and have some adrenal insufficiency. Nausea and vomiting, nausea and vomiting, it, it just, it happens because your patient is sick. All right. And then headaches and double vision. These can happen if the um, if the cancer is going to be affecting the brain. So you have neurological manifestations of lung cancer, tumors, headaches, vomiting as well um, can be caused from a brain tumor. If the patient has some uh, double vision or loss of a visual field, then we know that they, they may have a brain a brain tumor as well. Okay. Somebody says, would a lobectomy, that's a great question. Would a lobectomy help if caught in time in stage one? So I'm not a doctor, let me say that, but I do believe that commonly surgery can be helpful if a cancer is caught in the early stages. So like maybe stage one because you're able to see that the cancer has not, the cancer is usually localized to one place. And so if you cut out the cancer and modify the risk factors, it could be really helpful. Okay. All right. We're getting into this. We're talking about lung cancer today. This is such a, this, this topic is packed with so much information. Uh, I really love reviewing it. Okay. So we have the risk factors and the risk factors are really two different categories. Either these are risk factors that you can change and some risk factors you cannot change. So the genetic risk factors. And with cancer, genetic risk factors are, are kind of poorly understood, but evidence does show that they do have, um, they do play a role. So if you have um, a close relative that had, had lung cancer, you may have an increased risk of developing lung cancer, okay? Race and ethnicity. Um, I think from the research, it says that lung cancer does vary by race. Hispanic individuals have a lower odd of lung cancer compared to Black individuals. Um, and, and it just could be a matter of the, the smoking characteristics, the diet, and the physical activity, all right? And the research that I show, uh, used here did not compare Caucasian individuals to Black or Hispanics. Endocrine factors, we talked about how um, some cancer cells can produce their own endocrine functions, which is scary, but also estrogen and progesterone have um, play a role into cancer development. And so when you think about how if you're using an estrogen therapy or if you're using a progesterone therapy, you could have an increased risk for lung cancer. Another thing that they say too is that if you want to reduce your risk of cancer for women, breastfeeding helps to reduce your risk of cancer um, because of the hormones that are released during um, breastfeeding an infant. Opium use. So there's some interesting research that says that opium is considered to be carcinogenic to humans. So when you are um, discussing drug and alcohol addiction to patients, you can just go in there and throw in, hey, if you're using any kind of um, heroin, narcotics, remember those things are not common and natural to the body. And so um, they can also be considered as cancer producing substances. That's really cool. Cigarette smoking, we are just packing, packing, packing um, this idea that smoking is the primary cause of lung cancer in America and Europe 
and I'm probably sure all the other countries, but you just haven't done the research yet. But if you can stop smoking, um, then you can absolutely reduce your risk of not developing this type of cancer. And remember, smoking as well, secondhand smoking is just as dangerous as just smoking yourself. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Environmental factors. Somebody had mentioned this in the comments. Yes, if you are exposed to asbestos, if you're exposed to certain chemicals, uh, smoke, wood burning, even some things that you may have around your house, absolutely, these things are carcinogenic too. And then other pulmonary diseases, COPD, emphysema, pulmonary fibrosis, the inflammation of the lung tissue can also increase your chances of having lung cancer. So um, how do you diagnose it? How do you diagnose it? Well, an aspiration, a biopsy is going to be needed because we cannot look at a cancer cell apart from it being placed under a microscope to figure out what type of cancer it is. Remember, is a small cell all right, or is it non-small cell? All right, and now you guys know the difference between the two. I'm so proud of you guys for showing up and learning this information. So we're going to remove it. We are going to do an excisional biopsy when it, it, the, the, and, and that would be really great if we can do that because that is when you remove the entire mass, okay? The, the idea of an excision is that you're taking the entire thing out. Sometimes you only do a portion of, of, of the tumor and you just study a small cell, but if you could get all of it out, get all of it out, all right? Um, cytology is the exam of uh, the fluid found in the specimen and it is used, it can be used a lot for diagnosing the, the different types of cancers. So if a, if a woman has, like sometimes they'll find cysts on the breast tissue that may be attached to some a tumor, they will uh, remove the fluid from the cyst and study that, that fluid. Okay. Pet scans, CTs, MRIs, these are going to be beneficial to show if this tumor is present all right. It can also um, be a good screening tool before you do surgery. You need to know where you're going. You need to know um, if a person comes in and they're complaining uh, or they're reporting. I shouldn't say complaining. They're reporting um, vision changes. They're reporting abdominal pain and you cannot figure out why that's happening. The physician is going to order your patient to have a CT scan or an MRI. So we as nurses get in the NCLEX V2 and learn the information needed for the diagnostic procedures. If a patient is going for an MRI, you need to know what can they go in there with? What do they need to take off? Um, you need to know what health conditions are affected by MRIs and which ones don't matter. You need to know, can my patient wear jewelry? Can my patient have a pacemaker? These are all nursing interventions and nursing um, interventions and nursing assessments that have to be done, All right? And then tumor markers kind of sound like what they are. Essentially, you are looking at the tumor and you are marking it knowing, hey, is this a squamous cell carcinoma? Um, is this uh, just a regular carcinoma? Uh, we talked about it earlier. So we don't need to know the tumor markers for NCLEX, but we definitely need to know about the imaging studies, the definition of cytology, and the definition of a biopsy, okay? Okay, um, the management. And this is so cool that when we already have some of these things in our um, in our comments, because you guys uh, already have mentioned the surgery, you mentioned radiation, and then chemotherapy is a topic that we frequently talk about because the side effects are just so horrible when a patient is on chemotherapy, and we're doing a lot of patient management in that way. So surgery, usually this is done in the early stages, stage one or stage two of the non-small cell lung cancer. It is best used for non-small cell 
lung cancer. Surgery for the small cell lung cancer is very, it's limited and it's really controversial because remember, um, usually when small cell lung cancer is present, it is um, it's caught and it's already advanced and it's aggressive. So you think about a body that is um, that is already being invaded in multiple places with cancer, trying to um, find its balance, trying to uh, fight inflammation, trying to inf fight infection. And here we come thinking, okay, we're going to go in and we're going to perform surgery on multiple areas of this body to try to remove tumors. OK, and so sometimes when you're thinking, OK, if a person has cancer, why don't you just cut it out? Why don't you just take it away? The type of cancer makes such a difference, because if a body is already weak and you go cutting on it, you put the body to sleep, you open it up, you remove areas of the body because tumors are not just free floating tumors. Tumors are usually attached to what? They're attached to organs, right? So when we start cutting away parts of a body and then we stitch it back up, mm, mm, when that person wakes up, not only are they still having the cancer cells because cancer is on a cellular level multiplying, right? Now the body has what to deal with? The body has multiple areas of compromise. The body has pain. The body has bleeding. And so all of these additional resources have been placed on the body at the same time as the cancer. How, how much education do we as nurses have to have before just cavalierly saying, oh yes, surgery will help you. You know, this is the difference between a good nurse and a dangerous nurse. And it's simply your ability to be able to digest this content, remember it, and then educate patients on it. All right. So that's why I emphasize education with you guys. Infection. Absolutely. I forgot. Not now. When we cut them up and open them up and close them back up, they're in the, they're in the dirtiest place in the country, which is the hospital. And so now we have to fight infection for them. And what is their immune system like? because they have cancer. Their immune system is trash already. So now it's just like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. all right. Okay. So um, that's it. That's, that's all I wanted to, to say about that surgery. We have to be so careful when you talk about how surgery can help a patient because surgery can do some serious damage and the person be better off if you just didn't even touch them at all. All right. All right. Radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is, um, is, is, as it sounds, there's many different ways to deliver radiation uh, with a client with lung cancer. And so the different techniques are, are there. They're going to just um, allow for a more precision and target. They're going to, mm, uh, let me say this, radiation is in, I have to be so careful when you're talking about cancer because everything don't work for everybody. And so when you have radiation, usually it is used with non-small cell lung cancer and radiation is also limited. Radiation is helpful after surgery to help to um, reduce the, the spread, okay? But radiation also has its own challenges as far as the patient getting um, now radiated on top of cancer. So it's really specific and patients really have to weigh the risks and benefits of these types of treatments. So I want to walk on these types of things very carefully. And I'm not saying that they work all the time and I'm not saying that they're the best, but these are the options that we have, all right? Chemotherapy, chemotherapy in lung cancer can be used in combination with surgery and with radiation. Or we know patients can just get chemotherapy alone. And there are specific types of chemotherapy 
that I have listed here. Take a note of it, you guys. Screenshot this page and just spend some time looking at the um, this definitions, really. Okay. Our nursing considerations. This, these are the things that we need to make note of. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. We've been talking about cancers. Um, different types of cancers. We've been talking about preventing illnesses. And with lung cancer, it's the same. It's the same. Um, primary, we want to help this to not even be a problem. Okay. And primary prevention when it comes to lung cancer revolves around telling the patient not to do what? <laughs> it, it, it's really that simple. You don't really need to go into detail about it. When you talk about primary prevention for lung cancer, um, it is telling the patient not to smoke. Mm -hmm. Yep. Secondary prevention is um, secondary prevention is focusing on lung cancer uh, or smoking cessation. Let me say that the person has already started smoking. We didn't get them in enough time. They've been smoking, so <clears throat> we want them to quit smoking even if they've been smoking for a long time. So every time, you know, you admit a patient, which most of us will be admitting a lot of patients because we're new nurses, right? And when you go into a hospital healthcare system, the, the new nurses get admissions because it's, it's good. It's good for you anyways. So even if a patient comes in and they're like 60 years old and they're like, I've been smoking since I was 14 years old and nothing's wrong with me. We need to tell them it's, it's listen, smoking, uh, is it puts you at risk for so many other things. And the research shows that even if a person stops smoking for up to 30 years, they still can have lung cancer. They still can have issues because of the smoking they did years and years ago. And that's one of the problems with cancer, especially lung cancer, is that your diseased lung cells will continue to function. Because the body is so powerful, it's so unique, God created it, it's so amazing that even if things are not perfect, the body will adjust itself to whatever conditions you throw in at it. So if you're not drinking enough water like me, I know I'm not drinking enough water right now. My dehydrated body is still functioning because that's what it's doing, right? That's what it's meant to do. So we have to, we really have to get better about educating ourselves and doing the right things because the body will work with whatever is given and it's not always given the best thing, okay? All right, so um, that's secondary. Tertiary is mm, people who have lung cancer and we are trying to, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make use of the medications, the surgeries, the um, the treatments that are available, whether it's natural treatments or whether it is synthetic treatments. We're trying to just not let this lung cancer metastasize. All right. Therapy complications. Therapy complications are there. After surgery, what is going to be common are things that are associated with lung cancer. All right. So cough, dyspnea, shortness of breath. If a patient is getting um, radiation, even sometimes, yeah, if they're getting radiation, you guys know they have a huge problem with this esophagitis. Man, it can be bad. It can affect the mouth, the tongue, um, Radiation will swell up the lips. They won't be able to eat or drink. It's, the, mm, the side effects are bad, all right? And, and, and I saw a comment where a nurse was like, you got to know the side effects. You need to know the side effects. And so I agree with that. Um, chemotherapy, fatigue, weight loss, anemia. You have suppression of your immune system, um, something terrible. Um, you can also develop fevers as well for chemotherapy, in addition to the way it changes your appearance. So you do have hair loss. Your skin can um, become dry. Again, that weight loss, that diarrhea, that vomiting, um, your weakness, many, many different um, side effects to this lung cancer treatment therapy.
All right. Okay, guys. So we did uh, we did do the content. Now let's get into the questions. Let's get into the questions to to just evaluate whether we have been retaining the content. That's that's the reason that you do questions, nothing else. Okay, here we go. Oof, question number one, let's go, guys. Lung cancer is categorized as small cell lung cancer and non-small cell lung cancer. The four common subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer includes adenosarcoma, squamous cell carcinoma, large cell carcinoma, and is it adenosquamous carcinoma, neuroendocrine tumor, basal cell carcinoma, or lymphoma, okay? And this is something that we went over in the very, very beginning. So if you were there on time for this class, you got it. And this is how content makes a difference, right? I don't fool with strategies. I don't, I don't do, um, okay, hacks on the NCLEX because either you just know it because you studied it or you don't know it, all right? And don't forget, guys, I see the answers on the screen. Good job. Hi, everybody. Also, don't forget that we are unlocking, we are unlocking the surprise bonus question for today. So it is on YouTube to do it. And our number that we have to reach, it's about liking the video, right? We're trying to get a certain number of likes. We have 372 people watching on YouTube and 84 likes. So if we can get to 175 likes, which is just a few more, we can unlock the question. So go ahead if you're on YouTube and like this video. We have 84. We got to get to, what did I say? 100. Did I say 175? We're going to try to get to that number. All right. Okay, so here we go. The correct answer, good job. Good job, guys. The correct answer is number one. Yes, you did it. You did it, got it. A lot of you got it. I don't think anybody got that wrong. Excellent job, guys. So we do, we have adenocarcinoma, squamous carcinoma, adenosquamous carcinoma, and large cell carcinoma are the four major histologic subtypes of non-small cell lung cancer. OK, so this is really great because we want to know the difference mainly between non-small cell lung cancer and small lung, small cell lung cancer. OK. All right. OK, let's go to question number two. Let's see how you do with question number two. OK. Question number two. The nurse is reading a pathology report of a lung mass fine needle biopsy and it is finalized as T1A N0 M0 the nurse knows that this means okay, number 1 is it no evidence of primary tumor lymph node involvement and metastasis Two, tumor size is one cm centimeter in greatest dimension. No evidence of lymph node involvement and no metastasis. Three, primary tumor in situ, regional lymph node involved. Or four, tumor size is two centimeters in greatest dimension no evidence of lymph node involvement, and no metastasis. What do you guys see? What do you guys think? Can you read this? Can you read this pathology report? Oh, this is feeling very next-gen NCLEX to me, <laughs> reading a pathology report. But guess what? You guys are ready for it because we went over the content, just like we're going to go over it tonight. Are you joining me? Are you joining me for seven days of NCLEX? It starts tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. I'm giving you guys a report on your patient and we will go into it. Okay, correct answer. Again, very good. Yes, it's two. So T1A, 
N0, M0 means the tumor size is one centimeter in greatest dimension. There is zero evidence of lymph node involvement. There is zero evidence of metastasis. Did you guys get that right? Yes, amazing. You guys are doing very well. And we almost reached our number. I'm looking on my phone and we have 159 likes. So we were only getting ready. We're only wanting 175. So just a few more people smash that like button. And also don't forget, this is tonight's workbook. We're doing first shift. Okay, I'll get into that later. All right, here we go. Here we go. Question number three. Is this a client was recently diagnosed with small cell carcinoma and has been experiencing headaches and double vision. The nurse expects the initial action would be, number one, increase dose of chemotherapy. Two, obtain brain MRI. Three, facilitate, uh, facilitate radiation therapy to the brain. Or four, discontinue chemotherapy. What are we going to do? All right, you guys are learning about lung cell cancer. You're demonstrating your competence and you are doing it as a group. You're not alone when you're doing it. And that makes this all the better to know that there are a lot of people just like you on the grind, on the journey to getting their nursing license. Correct answer, I'm not gonna make you guys wait to obtaining that brain MRI. Of course, that only makes sense because when you have symptoms of central nervous system metastasis, and you already know a small cell carcinoma, it can happen that way. Now your brain is affected. And so you have headache, vomiting, visual field loss, hemoparesis, cranial nerve deficits, and seizures. And so to rule out the metastasis, initial confirmation is performed through a brain MRI. And so if the brain metastasis is, per, is confirmed, the possible treatment is going to be um, radiation therapy. All right. All right. Here we go. Next question. Let me see where we are on our counts. Hey, 173 likes. We only need two more. That's it. You guys did it in less than two questions. If you get two more, two more likes. Good job. All right. Next question is question number four. A current smoker was aware that lung cancer can develop due to smoking. The nurse teaches the client on secondary prevention for lung cancer, which is what? Okay. Number one, administration of a neoadjunctive therapy. Two, administration of high dose vitamin C. Mm. Three, providing nicotine replacement. Or four, provide health education on how nicotine affects the body. See, now this is different because we're talking about um, a current smoker knows that lung cancer can develop due to smoking. So when you're talking about secondary prevention for lung cancer, what do we need to do? Ooh, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So what we need to do for this client that is worried about lung cancer. Okay. And the thing about NCLEX is that you can have, you can have more than one that is right, but you have to pick the best answer. Let me see. Did y'all unlock this question? Because we might need to read. We have... All right. I see the answers. I thought this one would be kind of straightforward, but I see it's maybe a challenge. Okay. So the correct answer is number three. I'm going to read the rationale why number, why number three is right. Because with secondary prevention, we already know that the lung cancer, we, we know that the client has already been exposed to the risk factors, right? So they're already smoking. And so what we need to do is we need to stop the exposure. That That's what we need to do. We have to stop the exposure to the thing, right? And so when you have two choices like, okay, providing nicotine replacement therapy, 
which means that the patient will stop smoking or providing health education on how nicotine affects the body. Why is three better than four? Why is three better than four? Okay. Um, and so, 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 so three is going to be better than four because Three is going to reduce the exposure. Now, we can educate. I mean, okay, because if you picked four, then you're saying, okay, I'm going to provide the education while this is bad, all right? And so I'm going to send my patient home with, with these papers, right, that's going to say, okay, all why nicotine is bad. And when they get home, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be reading it, smoking, reading it. Mm, okay, that Remar nurse said I should stop doing it. Still smoking, right? Until when? Until they might see you again. And then another nurse might have to say, um, you know, this is it. All right. And so the, the idea is the the working idea, the working idea is which is going to be most effective. All right. Um, don't get into, don't get into, well, do I have an order for this or can I actually do this? The ideas with NCLEX right now is that it's a perfect world, right? It's a perfect world. And so providing nicotine replacement therapy is what we would be, um, what we would be most desirous of for the patient because that would mean they would stop smoking, okay? Education at this point is not the primary focus because they're already smoking. All right, good job, guys. All right, and- um, from what I can tell, this is good. That was going to be the last question. Let me go back because that was question four. But let me check here on my phone. And we did. We got 199. So everybody that smashed the like button, congratulations because we did it this week. We got the bonus question, which is cool because I think we needed it. We need another question for this. So let's 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 do one more question. Thank you guys so much for getting us there today. Question number five. The client inquires about the possible reaction to chemotherapy. The nurse explains that this includes, mm, here we go, esophagitis, fatigue, and leukopenia, dysphagia, and dyspnea. And I'm going to say this. I, this question should be a select all that apply. Even, okay, so, okay, okay, I'm accepting two answers here because now that I read it, there's two answers that could be right here. Give me the two answers. <laughs> what? Oh, man. Oh, no, because I see two answers. Yeah, I see two answers here that I could go for. Mm -hmm. It happens like that sometimes. But I mean, most of you are picking the one answer that I have, but there's another answer that I would accept too. Mm, okay. So we're talking about their possible reactions to chemotherapy, not them having lung cancer, which was the subject today, but what are the reactions to chemotherapy that I'm going to be educating my patient on? And when we talk about reactions, we're talking about things that we're expecting, not things that we're not expecting. Okay, so um, I don't know if I could do this. Let me see if I could do this in real time. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can do this in real time. Stand by. My, um, I don't know if I can. Can I do this one? Oh, I don't know if I can do it. I don't think I can do it. Thank you for that inner inner interlude, Team Remar. Mm, I don't know. Let's see. Um, 
I try to do my very best with this one. All right, here's the answer. This is what I have. And I see some of you guys. All right, here we go. Correct answer. Is one and two are correct. Is one and two. They're both correct here. And let me tell you why. Because we're talking about, we are talking about the side effects, the possible reactions to chemotherapy. At first, I did have two because definitely fatigue and leukopenia are going to be affected. Like they, you're going to have those things, okay? For sure. But I do, I said esophagitis because you are going to have inflammation of that soft muco, like the mucous membranes, the mucosal are going to be inflamed because of chemotherapy. That's what it does. So I would accept one and two. I would accept one and two. Yeah, I mean, just the irritation. Chemotherapy can irritate the esophagus. And you do, you do have vomiting, right? Um, and you can also get it through the radiate through radiation too. Yes, 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 as well. I wouldn't um the dysphagia. Um, I wouldn't expect dysphagia, all right. Um, I would have I would have expect the inflammation and the pain, but not the ability for the muscles to respond, okay. And I would not expect shortness of breath from chemotherapy. That would that would not be something, all right. So for NCLEX, I would choose two, but I would also choose one two as well. I would also accept one. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go on and let's do our Monday motivation, Monday motivation. But before I do, just in case you guys are not aware, seven days of NCLEX does start tonight. And also the, the final time that we will be doing the introductory price for V2 is also starting today. Okay. So I hope you guys did well on those questions. If you got four out of five, I think you'd be doing pretty well today because we went over a lot of the content. Um, so if you haven't signed up for seven days of NCLEX to get your workbook for tonight, go to remarnurse.com. I emailed it to you guys. We will be looking at our first shift. First shift start tonight. This is the MAR for our patients. You will get report. Can you see this? Um, you will get report on your patient tonight and you will be able to go through the questions. I already have some of the questions with me, but we'll be doing it live tonight. So these are the questions on our patient. All right. So this is for the um, anybody taking NCLEX R and or PN. This is a free NCLEX review. And then also it's a lot of next gen components integrated into it, which I think is great because seven days of NCLEX is about challenging you to take it to the next level. Okay. During the holiday season. Okay. Rejoice. You are blessed. This is Monday Motivation. Merry Christmas to everybody. Christmas was yesterday and I went into the stores today and I saw all that Christmas stuff already 50% off. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame. But some of you guys do not enjoy the holiday season. Okay. It is a tough time for you. Um, it is, it is a time where you think about loss, think about what you don't have. Somebody said that the holiday season's are one of the perfect times for you to really realize how broke you actually are, how you don't have what you thought you would have by now, how you're not able to give, how you are, are lacking in certain areas, you know, relationships, socially, financially, uh, career wise. And so I want to speak to the people that may be struggling with that. Okay. Um, I want you to put aside your sadness, your doubts and your negative thinkings. And I want to remind ourselves that we are blessed. All right. We are blessed because out of all the things, you know, you think about Christmas, you think about the holiday, the trees and things like that, the presents, the gifts. None of those things are the real reason for this season. OK, there is one real reason for this season, and that is that our God gave his only son to save us from our sins. That's it. That is the gift. And if you can partake in even a small part of that huge gift, you're blessed. Okay. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm a believer. Remar represents believers. Okay. And no matter what 
what you can amass, no matter what you can, you know, build in your life, no matter what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you live in, what kind of clothes you're wearing, uh, where you work at, whatever titles you hold, there is a name that is above every name. And if you are not a part of that plan, if you are not a part of that mission, the little bit that you accomplish in your 70, 80 years of life is not going to go very far if it's all about you. If you are not leading people to something greater and eternal reward, cancel it, cancel it. Um, Because without Christ, we would not live in this world. Without him, trouble would last always. The, the, The momentary trouble that we face and experience, the Bible says it is nothing to be compared to the eternal glory that is waiting for you. You have something so much better that's waiting for you. The the Bible says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what Jesus is bringing back to us what we are going to experience in heaven with him. Whatever you think is good, you have no idea what your Lord has prepared for you. But we are in this world together right now, all right? And so um, we, we must thank we must thank the Lord and remember how he sacrificed his son for us. We, we, we have to think about, you know, whatever hard times you're having, I'm reading right now in the book of Matthew, and it it literally is talking about how Christ, from when he came to the planet, his life was hard. Not the fact, I mean, we think about him being born in a manger, and that's pretty messed up that the God of this world had to be born amongst animals, right? His mother had to have him in a barn. I don't know what kind of bad days you've been experiencing, but I've had a baby before and I cannot imagine having one in a barn amongst stinking animals in the dirt, all these things, right? So that is how Christ was introduced into the world. And then nobody that was supposed to know he was coming knew he was coming. None of the church people were waiting for this baby. They were not waiting. It was actually three men from a whole different place, not a part of the church at all, that came to the king and said, the star is out. The king of the Jews have been born. Where is he? And what did King Herod say? He said, what? Uh, He's here? Who? He is? He was angry. He was upset because he didn't want to think about somebody else coming to, to take over his throne. You know, this is what Jesus was born in. And then as as a result of King Herod finding out that Jesus had been born, what did he do? He killed every baby that was under the age of two because he couldn't find out who Jesus actually was. These are the conditions that Jesus was born in. These are the, this is the situation that our Lord had to endure trying to save us from a baby, from a baby. People hated him. Okay, and so what what can you overcome knowing knowing these things that somebody came to this planet to endure all this suffering for just you? Jesus would have came if it was just you who needed saved. That's how much he loves us. And so we as a people, you know, we have to we have to know that our struggles are momentary. They're light. Okay, they're light. They're momentary. Okay, we must thank the Lord and remember how he sacrificed his son for us. Thank him for what we have today. Today, if God does nothing else for you, you are saved. You have the opportunity to be saved. You have the opportunity to confess your sins. And you are indeed blessed with a perfect Monday that you have never seen before. This is a Monday that you have never experienced. What opportunity do you have, right? What opportunity do you have? So um, that's kind of where I want to get our minds to. Yesterday, we, you know, we recognized the birth of Jesus, however you recognized it. There's nothing wrong with recognizing he did come, right? And the thing about it is that because he came a first time, you can have faith that he is what? That he is coming back again, that he is coming back again, because that's what he says. And his word is always true. All right. His word is always sure and it's always true. So if he came 
endured all of that to the cross, resurrected and said, lo, I am coming for you. I am coming back to get you. Oh, what blessed joy is that? What do we have to be sad about? What do we have to be sorrowful for? For all of our promises, if we give them to God, he holds them. Yes, it's a good Monday. It's a good Monday. That's a great motivation. And just for me, you guys know that every one of you here, um, it, it is such a pleasure to be in this community. All right. It's such a pleasure to be a part of this community. And before we end this session, I just like to thank all of you, every one of you guys for following and studying with me over everything, everything, um, you know, that, that we do here, uh, the, the Monday motivations, the winning Wednesdays, the anxiety workshops, the 30 day challenge. We're doing seven days of NCLEX tonight. <laughs> um, the V2 scary topics, all the things that we do for our community is literally because we need you guys to know that you were created with a purpose. You have this ministry in your heart and it's for a reason. The, the Bible says that we are the body of Christ. And so nurses, we are the hands, we are the feet, we are the mouths of God's children who cannot do things for themselves. We have a specific knowledge that uh, a lot of people don't have. And so if we are to be God's hands, right? If we are to be God's hands, then we have to, we have to be willing. We have to be willing to um, endure the trials and tribulations. That's what I want to say. Mark, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> Do you? All right. Okay. Love it. All right. So yeah, she starts bring her on. Okay. She should have her workbook. Okay. Does she have her workbook? Okay. Yeah, she got her workbook. So, yeah. So, so things happen in Remar Live that you guys get to experience that even you guys get to experience it even with me. And so it seems like we have a Remar nurse that's going to jump on here right now. Okay. Yeah. Is that what's happening? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Can me? Venus? Yes. Hi, Venus. Hi, Regina. Oh, my God. How are you? Hi, how are you? I am well. I am just sitting here and I'm listening and I'm looking like, wait a minute. That's my face I see in the camera. How are you, girl? I'm doing so good. What's going on? How'd you jump on here? Regina, I watch you all the time. I am struggling profusely. I don't know why because I'm doing everything. I'm about to take my NCLEX um, February 4th. But okay. I'm I'm trusting and believing on this one because I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. So I'm just really trusting and believing. I watch you all the time. Hi, Mark. Hi, hello to the family. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hi. we Mark hello, family. Hello. hello, everybody. But Gina, I've been watching you now for two years. I took my NCLEX one time, and the longest time ago was in 2014, mm -hmm. and I didn't pass. Mm -hmm. I got discouraged. I said, I'm never doing it again. You know one of those, because you talked about it one time before. You said, mm -hmm. don't give up, don't give in. And that's when, by the grace of God, I was able to pick my spirit back up. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute. Regina said, with Remar, you can, you will, and you must. And mm -hmm. I thought about it, and I got back into it, and I tried it again. And I, for some reason, I just didn't feel good because um you started doing questions and you start asking everybody to jump in and I started getting the questions, the answers wrong. Again, I said, well, wait a minute. A lot of the people on the broadcast is answering the questions, right? Mm -hmm. I'm answering them wrong. What is going on? What is it? What is it with me? I figured it out. I was working two jobs. I stopped working in two jobs. Okay. I put more effort and more time into studying. Okay. And like I was telling you before, and like you said, it can't just be questioned. You have to know the content yeah. as well. So Absolutely. I put more emphasis and more energy into learning the content. I jumped back on with you. I started answering questions, right? And I got so excited. And then um, I just continued to stay on with you and continue to watch you live. A lot of times I didn't say anything. and I didn't even answer questions because I felt like I needed to obtain the knowledge. So I, was, I had my notes my book, my pen. So a lot of time, everything you were saying, I was going full force, writing down everything Love you it. said. All right, now let me ask you, let me ask you real quick. Do you have the workbook with you? 
I don't have it yet because yeah. I just went to my Gmail and I just saw that you sent it. I didn't know you sent it because I had um requested to get a copy okay. of it and I kept checking yeah. back. In fact, I had got str I struggled with. I tried to order the V two because I been did the um the first um. Yeah. Yeah, I did that one already, but I tried to get the V2 for whatever reason. I don't know. My credit card wouldn't go through whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And then um, I tried to order um, the NCLEX um, seven days Good the guys. workbook. Okay. And I checked back um, maybe so just it, last but it's week. In your, it's in your email right now, Did you right? get that, though? Because that class is tonight. Did yeah, you, get class your, you got tonight. the workbook? I definitely got that. I just saw the email, so I'm going to download okay. it and right. print it out so right listen, now. Guys, if you signed up for seven days of NCLEX, check your email, check your spam, do a search for uh, Remar and make sure that it comes up. Um, so, Venus, what I want to do for you, um, can you uh, can you put your cash app in the comments or just tell us that right now? Oh, let me take that down. Sure. It is dollar sign. Hold on one second. Let me, let's, let's write this down real quick. OK, Mark giving away money today. All right, All right. But listen, she don't have a workbook with her, so it's not going to be as much, but we're going to help you out still. You got to have All it. Right? We're going to do something for you. OK, <laughs> what All is right? it? Okay. Go ahead. It's dollar sign Venus, V-E-N-U-S, capital G, I-B-S. That's it. Dollar sign Venus Gibbs. Oh, OK, 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 good. OK, perfect, perfect. Listen, it was a, uh, a pleasure to speak with you. We're going to uh, check your cash out with probably the next hour or so. As soon as we get off, we're going to hook you up with something. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Get that workbook printed and we'll see you tonight for seven days of NCLEX. OK, absolutely. Thank you. God bless you guys and many, You're many welcome. blessings to you and the family. Thank you. God bless. God bless. All right. Who do we have? We have. Let me see. Miss Confidence. Let's see. All right. Let's see. All right, we're coming to you. It's a little bit dark. Huh? It's a little bit dark, but, but we have you here. Hi. Is this confidence. Hi. 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 Good evening here in Nigeria. Good evening, Regina, Mark. God bless Whoa. you. I love it. Oh, I love it. You're watching from Nigeria. All the yeah, way my Nigeria. daughter Isabel is saying good. Hi. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you for coming on to Monday Motivation. It's so good to have you. Absolutely. Hi. Regina, you're inspiring individuals, Hi. nurses from all around the world, including Hi. the motherland. We love it. We love it. We love it. I love it. Now, listen, are you coming to Seven Days of Inclex tonight? Are you going to watch yeah, Seven yeah, Days I'm of Inclex? Yeah, I'm letting my walk with my I've downloaded my workbook. It's ready. I came to visit my sister-in-law, but we're going home. It will be by 2 a.m. here in Nigeria. So I've set my alarm. I'll be awake, hopefully, by God's grace. Ooh. Absolutely. That is amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for getting the workbook and just and, and setting an alarm. That is amazing. I am so I am so humbled hey. that you would be at be coming to that class for sure around you the world are really are really trying. yes you are yes you are so you um so you're going to plan to take NCLEX R is it RN yes RN yeah hopefully um I know it will certainly be the next gen considering how it's going with my papers and transcript mm -hmm. I know it will be in the next gen so I'm really practicing for that Yes, and so tonight we'll tonight we will be doing a lot of that. It will be perfect for you, Congress. I want you to be there because we're gonna get you. I we're gonna get you ready for it. Okay. I will, by God's grace, I will. By God's grace, Amen. Listen, do you have Cash App by any chance? Do you have Cash App? I don't have, sir. All right, give me. Uh, let me see. What's your? Let me think. Let me think. Are you on Facebook or on YouTube? I'm on Facebook. On Facebook, okay. On Facebook, uh, do us a favor, comment with your, uh, your email address, and we'll get in touch with you. Okay. All right, I'll send you my email address. Can I send it Perfect. here? Yeah. Well, yeah. Just write on Facebook, and it'll have your name here, and so just put it in your email address, and we'll get in touch with you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All right. We'll see what we can do for have... you. Okay. Okay, All sir. Right. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Stand up, Nigeria. Wow. Nigeria so listen, guys, we are excited. Nigeria in, in the, the house. house. Hey. hey, Nigeria. Oh, man, that's amazing. Oh, man. Let's For sure.
Remar Nurse is a global. I can't believe family is a you global. guys are all over the world. I cannot yeah. believe you guys are all over the world like Every this. Every time this zone. Is, this blows my mind, man. Well, you just talked about what God would do. I know. You just I know. talked about, you know, the exceedingly, the abundantly, I know. I know. right? And so, listen, we want to make sure that you guys get okay. your blessing tonight. Yo, yeah, we right? got to go. Eight o'clock. Oh, my goodness. Seven days of NCLEX begins, and it is a seven-day free NCLEX review with the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet, Woo! with the number one nursing family on the planet, the Remar Nurse family. So we want to make sure that you are there. Have your workbook. Have your workbook. We I sent think... it out several times. Wow. <laughs> so make sure that you print it. All right? Make sure that you can print that, okay? Nigeria. Do you guys have any questions before uh, before Regina goes? you have yeah, any have, questions? We, this thing starts in tonight? six hours. Six hours. Any yeah. questions, guys? Any questions? Right? Um, let's see. The introductory price for the uh, for the V2 will go away after this event. It will. The last day, I believe, will be January the 7th. So take advantage of that Don't three wait. months Don't access. wait. Because that's... Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to wait. You want to get that like you want to get that now so that you <laughs> yes. can get your license. All right. You want to yes. get that now so that you can get your license. Any other questions that we have for I this think event? So I gotta go, Mark. Like I literally go. have to go because I have so much stuff to do for tonight. I, I want to start on time. I, I gotta, I gotta, I just I'm starting. I'm starting with lunch because Let's if I don't it. eat lunch, then my mind is gonna be now. Listen, what? make sure that they go on Facebook, on YouTube, mm -hmm. on Instagram, mm -hmm. and TikTok. To follow at Remar Nurse, oh, yeah, we'll be picking somebody else. so that they can be eligible to win the two hundred dollars cash app tonight, or tomorrow night, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Thursday, yeah. or Friday, or Saturday, yeah. or Sunday. We want to give that to you. Yeah. So Look, make sure that you follow us. It's free. Joe has a good question. She says, "Uh, he's Joe at John. So okay, so if you purchase V two, your workbook is downloadable." So your workbook, you can get it right. You can get it right to your file vault. If you go to your file vault, you'll see workbook and you'll see this little blue arrow. Just click on that arrow. Yeah. Okay? And also it comes to you first by email. Oh, so yeah. as soon as you sign up, you get an instant email to download that. You want to download that within, I think, one or two days. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you miss that deadline, then you can go into your file vault and it'll be there for you for your workbook. But congratulations on getting the V2 at an amazing introductory rate. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Somebody says, what time tonight? What time tonight? Tonight is at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm so nervous. I've never done... Um, I've never done a seven days like this before. You know, this is new. This for is me. new. Doing and it in shifts. I'm doing it in shifts. And I'm telling you guys, you need the workbook because I am not... This page right here, I'm not making... I'm not making any kind of presentations for this. Mm. I want you guys to be able to read it in front of you. I'm not putting it up on the screen. You will work this like a real assignment, guys. So get okay? your clipboards so out. So I'm telling you, have your workbooks tonight. You need it for the class. You're going to need it for the class. I'm so nervous. Listen, Olga, <laughs> Olga has a question here. It says, I already have the quick facts. So how much is the V2? Oh. I already have the quick facts. So how much is the V2? Oh, okay. So right now, if you don't have the quick facts, you can get the V2, you get the quick facts, you get the question bank mm -hmm. uh, for $89 for three months access. Yeah. If you already have the quick facts, then it's only $69 for the three months. Yeah, it's it's insane, it's guys. Really, right, really it's really insane. insane. All yeah. right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. How much is the V2? Same thing, right? $69 if you have the quick facts. $89 yeah. if you don't have the quick mm -hmm. facts. Uh, somebody else says... Um, is, the, is the quick facts downloadable? No, quick facts... Quick Facts is not downloadable. It is not downloadable. So, so that will, will be coming to yeah, you. Yeah, that'll be mailed to you. But you'll see, you don't have to start studying. The V2 is a four-week program. So, like, you should be able to get it finished in about a month's time, right? You should be done. So you will start studying Quick Facts um, after your seventh study session. So you'll see it in your calendar. Okay, Mark, I got to really go. Since you want to purchase the V2. Where can they purchase the V2 at? You can go to remarknurse.com. For the V2, the Inclex V2. I'm, I'll also be spotlighting that during my countdown. I'm counting down 100 days Ooh, to yes. next gen Inclex. So if you guys have been seeing me on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, we're counting down 100 days to next gen. So every day I'm talking about something different. We just got the passing standard for RN and PN. So check that video out. 
Um, yeah, yes, 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 cool, yes. Cool, cool, cool. What about somebody that's abroad? If somebody who lives in the motherland mm -hmm. or or in the Philippines or Canada, can they get the V2 also? Yes, absolutely. You can got you guys, all my international students, Nigeria in the house, Nigeria in <laughs> the house. I'm so I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, you can get it too. You can get it too. You just have to pay for international shipping, but the price of the V2 is just $89. So that's that's it. That's the that's the post. Okay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's see. Here's a question. Is the V2 for next generation NCLEX? It's for current NCLEX and next generation NCLEX. I only say that it can be used for current NCLEXs because all of the next gen questions in the question bank. Uh, we have bow ties, we have case studies, we have multiple matrix. Those can all be either um, utilized or you can uncheck them and you won't see them. So I, it's up to you. So it's next gen optional. Yeah. Right. So you can pass the NCLEX before it changes and also prepare for it after it changes if you're in that camp. All right. Okay. Cool, cool, okay. Cool. All right, and since we are coming back on, so we have to go. Yes, we, get we have ready, to go, guys. guys. Whole lot to do, so guys. I will see you guys tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's like six hours away. So we're going to just refresh all of this and get ready for tonight, okay? So I will see you guys soon. If you have questions about um, any of the products or how you can get started, please just send an email, support at remarreview.com, or you can just... Chat me on Facebook as well. We do Messenger on Facebook. Yeah. We ain't hard to find. We here. Yeah. They definitely know I'm here every Monday. Okay. For sure. Now, listen, make sure that you're on time tonight. We're going to start with prayer. We're going to close with prayer. It's going to be an amazing time, yes. guys. Maybe even a word. We will see. But this is going to be uh, an amazing time. All right? Yes. Um, I would not. I, I mean, you can come and listen to the seven days of inquest, but you really need the workbook in order to be effective tonight. So if we're going to be an effective team. You have to come with your study materials that I sent out and I'll come with the educational part. OK. All right. Woo. Let's go, Mark. All right, guys. We will see you in a little bit. Hey, it's the seven days of NCLEX. Are you ready for this special holiday event? It is seven whole days of a free nursing review. And if you have a little elf like me, this is the perfect opportunity because we're going to do it right online. You don't have to leave your home. Hey, what's better than your nursing license? What is better than your nursing license? Can you tell me anything? We want you to sign up for it. <laughs> Bring your little elf if you have to. We're all real people. We want to see you succeed. So sign up. You did it. You signed up for seven days of NCLEX and I cannot wait to start giving you gifts. Your very first gift, you're not going to believe it. It is going to be free access to a better NCLEX review. It is the newest one I created. Just click the link below and you will get access to my new V2. If it's your first time joining seven days of NCLEX, Oh man, let me introduce myself. I'm Regina Callion, the number one NCLEX instructor on the planet. And I'm gonna help you get your nursing license this holiday season. Yes, I'm also, because it's the season of giving, giving you my ultimate NCLEX study package. It is coming right to your email, so make sure you check it. It's going to have drug cards, practice NCLEX questions, and rationales, images, everything okay just make sure that you check your email stay posted stay connected seven days of NCLEX is coming so I want to be communicating with you directly to your email to let you know so that you're on time and ready for this major event if you can get through these seven shifts during seven days of NCLEX your nursing license is coming to you you can you will and you must pass NCLEX